Good morning and welcome to worship as we're gathered in the, in the name of the Lord this morning. We're going to begin by reading together from Psalm 27. Would you stand together with me as we read? Psalm 27 verses 1 and 4. The Lord is the, my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. We're here this morning and we're, we are the temple of the living God. Amen? With God's Spirit living in us, we gather name of Jesus, and we're going to sing, Here I Am to Worship. Would you join us as we sing? <clears throat>
altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Amen. Amen. We're here to worship this morning. You can be seated. Thank you for being here this morning. Isn't it great to be in God's house? Amen. We're so happy that we have such a wonderful day to come and worship. We have the freedom to come and worship. And I just appreciate you all being faithful in your attendance. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the, the, the pleasure that is ours to be able to gather as a family of God in this place today to worship you. And Father, we thank you for the uh, music. We thank you for the word coming up. And Father, we thank you most of all for Jesus and the salvation that we enjoy in him. Father, I pray that we will be able to worship you today in a manner that is uh, fitting uh, for you. And Father, I pray that we would also be able to learn how to be your people as we leave this place so that we can engage this world uh, for, with the gospel. Father, I just thank you so much uh, for allowing us to be yours. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Amen. We, we sing about Jesus and how worthy he is. And the next song is about declaring to him that we want to build our life on Jesus. That's who we are. We're people that are transformed by his love, by his goodness, by his righteousness. And he's making us what he wants us to be, the light of the world to the dark community around us. So would you stand one more time as we sing, Build My Life. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus, the all above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is none one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone and I will not 
like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your love and lead me in your love to those around Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His good lost in his love this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long let's sing that chorus this is my story this is my song praising my savior my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Let's, let's be seated. You know, the Lord has got all the resources in the world for us as we walk with Him day by day. There's not a day that goes by that He doesn't have the strength to give to us and all of the things that we need in our lives, whether it is uh, strength or other kinds of resources, just to walk with Him. Just the ability to walk with Him. He gives us that day by day. Because He is, as one song has put it, He is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. He is a promise keeper. He is light in the darkness. And many other names that we could give to Him this morning. And all of them so true. He is the one who makes a way. He gives us all that we need. And so as we 
listen to this next song. You, you join in if you, you feel like it and if you can catch some of the words. Some of you may know this song. in the darkness my God that is who you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my God that is who you are you are here touching every heart I worship you worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you, I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 that is who you are. That is who you are, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. 
Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, you're the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 You're the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Amen, church. That's who he is. Amen. 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 Do you believe this? How are they going to hear about him if we don't tell? I want to invite you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, we'll be looking at verses 14 through 16. Today we'll be talking about light in a dark world, light in a dark world. And as I was uh, looking at this, I've come across a story of a, of a farmer uh, who lived back in the days before electricity. And he, had, he was giving his uh, hired man a hard time because the hired man was carrying a lighted lantern to go see his best girl. And he said, back when I was courting, I didn't carry a lighted lantern. I didn't need to, to have those extravagances. And the guy said, yes, but look what you wound up with. <laughs> you know, making decisions in the dark can lead to regrettable consequences. It can lead to bad decisions, but Jesus tells us that we are the light of the world. That we're the light of the world. He expects us to live in that light because He has given us that light. So I want to invite you to stand with me today. And let's look at Matthew 5, beginning at chapter four, uh, verse 14. Uh, Matthew 5, verse 14, Scripture says, this is, this is the Lord Jesus speaking, You are the light of the world. 
A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand and gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the awesome opportunity that you have given us as your servants to share the light of the glory of your grace and mercy with this lost world, this dark world. So, Father, as we spend these next few moments in your word, I pray that you would just help us to re-examine what it means to be light, what it means to be light in this dark world, that you would give us, through your Holy Spirit, just a glimpse of the truth that that is contained in these few verses. Father, I pray that as we worship you here, that you would be with us and that we will be responsive to your leadership. In Christ's name, amen. You can be seated. You can follow along in the outline provided in the, on the back of the bulletin. And I just have to say that it's a marvelous truth that Jesus made those of us who are in him light. He made us light. He says, you are the light of the world. And he expects us to shine in this world with the truth of that gospel of his. You know, um, as Christians, we're just everyday people who happen to be in Christ. We're just everyday ordinary people, aren't we? But yet we're the light of the world. Think about this crowd that he's speaking to here. He's uh, just finished giving the Beatitudes. He's, He's preaching the Sermon on the Mount. And he's talking to a group of people on a hillside. He's not talking to the United Nations or, or to Congress or even to the school board. He's not talking to a local assembly at City Hall. He's talking to a group of ordinary, everyday people on the, on the side of a hill in a little town or a little spot of land called Palestine. Just common people living ordinary lives just like you and me. They were under occupation by Rome. They they couldn't make their own laws. They couldn't determine their own future. They had no way of, 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 uh, of determining their own destinies. But yet Jesus looked them in the eye and he said, You're the light of the world. Everyday people. You know, we may feel insignificant at times. We may feel ordinary at times. But folks, I want you to hear me say that as as a believer in the Lord Jesus, as a follower of Christ. You can make an incredible difference in someone's life, in this whole world. We have to accept our identity in Christ. We have to receive the salvation He's given us. And that's a, that's a, after we accept the Lord's uh, forgiveness, we have to believe that He has forgiven us. That that old is really gone. That we really are new creations of His. And that we are light. And it begins by recognizing A few things I want to point out today. First of all, that we live in a dark world. We live in a dark world. I sometimes wonder, uh, I sometimes wonder if as Christians we truly believe that this world is dark. I wonder sometimes if we as Christians believe that it's, it's dark. You see, the world boasts of its sophistication. It boasts of its intellectual insights. You know, you can look back through history and see that. Look in the Renaissance. The Renaissance is just the French word for rebirth. And that describes exactly what happened in the, in the 15th and 16th centuries of Europe. You see, they were coming out of the Dark Ages, and, and suddenly all this intellectual and economic changes were occurring, and they were proud of themselves. In fact, it's called humanism. You know what humanism is? It's just the idea that humanity is the center of its own universe, that I can be the center of my own universe. And what did that lead into? It led into the Enlightenment in the 18th century. Just more intellectual and philosophical mumbo-jumbo that, that talks about how important we are as humanity. In fact, you've heard the expression, I think, therefore I am. Rene Descartes said that. He was a very devoted Christian. And if he had any idea the profound implications of opening Pandora's box there and saying, I think, therefore I am. He would have never uttered those words. He would have never said those words. I create my own truth. Look, hundreds of years later, what's happened? We're all going our own way, saying what, I, what, what goes on in this world is because I say it. I define truth. Proverbs says, many are the plans of a person's heart, but the Lord's purposes are, that, are all that prevail. You see, accomplishments are not a bad thing. I'm not saying that there was not 
good things that came out of the Enlightenment and of the Renaissance. Certainly there were. But the self-congratulatory, I'm the center of the universe, and I'm so important that I get to define what's happening here. That's darkness, folks. Humanity's definition is of light is dim. If I say that I'm light, apart from Christ, you see, it doesn't reconcile with the true definition of light, does it? You see, if you look in Webster, light just simply is something that makes vision possible. You've heard of the blind leading the blind? Webster defines darkness as not receiving, not re, uh, reflecting, not transmitting, or even radiating light. Folks, there's no argument that we're living in a dark world. We're living in a dark world. Praise Jesus, we have the light of the world. Jesus said, in him was light, and the life was the light of men. But John went on to say that here's the verdict. The light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Folks, if I'm promoting myself over Jesus, if I'm promoting my truth over the real truth of the gospel and of the word of God, that's darkness. It's darkness. There's no hope in that. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Folks, I want you to hear me say that the world believes the lies that they have created. They believe the lies that they have created truth, and that that truth is individual. They believe that they can come in and say this is what's going to happen, and it will happen. They believe this. People believe that they are something when they're really nothing. That's the reality of it. We live in a dark world. All you have to do is look at their knowledge. Look at the knowledge that has been created out of this dark world. Look how it has, has informed the way that we interact with one another. The personal conduct of most people today. Just the way that we associate with one another. Very uncivilized. By any standard. Even a dark world standard. We live in a dark world. Suicide, divorce, depression, all up. You may say, well, it's COVID. All right? So we, we have a problem. We have a, a, a crisis in our life. What do we do? Do we turn to our own truth? Our own truth leads us to depression. Our own truth leads us to suicide, to increased abuse at home, to drug addiction. Look at our relationships at home, in the family, and community, even nationally. Look at the uncivilized way that we're interacting today. It's okay for me to say I hate you because you disagree with me. That's, that's the world we're living in today. I can say that I wish you would die if you don't agree with me. That's the dark world philosophy today. What about all the mothers that are murdering their unborn babies today? That's the dark world we're living in today, but that's my truth. Folks, I want you to hear me say that in spite of all this darkness in this world, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. That a city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. What does that mean? That means we must, we must be faithful in sharing the light of Jesus. We have to be faithful. Why? Because we live in a dark world. We live in a dark world. Have you ever been in a, in a, a house that the lights don't work? You know, if, I don't have a recurring dream in my life. I some people have these dreams. But the, the one dream that I do have that a situation happens is I go into a, a room and the light switch won't work. And I'm walking around in the dark. It's the most frustrating dream. It's not scary. It's just aggravating. We live in a dark world. We live in a dark world. Do we believe as believers in the Lord Jesus, as people who claim Christ in your life, that we live in a dark world? We live in a dark world. But the Lord said it doesn't end there. It doesn't end with a dark world because why? He told us in verse 14, you are the light of the world. We live in a dark world, but we're the light of the world. That's a fact. You know why I know it's a fact? Jesus said it. It's not my truth, your truth, some philosophy. Somebody said a quote somewhere that we get to quote over and over and over again. Jesus, the Christ himself, you are the light of the world. There's no denying it. If you're in Christ, you're the light of the world. Paul says, For you once were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. 
He personifies it. He says that you were darkness. When you are outside of Christ, you're darkness. You're the problem. When you're in Christ, you're the solution. He gives you as a conduit to point others to Christ. You're the light of the world. We're light because Jesus is light. Jesus has given us a relationship with the Father. John 8, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You see, Jesus said he was the light of the world. And then he turns around and says that we're the light of the world as well. You know why? Because Jesus is light because his Father is light. Jesus was all about, all the time, consistently focusing and linking himself to the Father. Every step he made, he connected himself with the Father. John Piper, that famous pastor that's given California a run for their money right now in this COVID uh, darkness, he said, The light of Christ is the brightness of God shining in the retina of the human soul. You see, that Greek word is phoos. It means light, anything emitted light, light and brightness. We are created to have a relationship with the Father. Bottom line. We live in a dark world. We're looking for the light switch. And that's what all these philosophers are doing. Looking for the light switch. My truth is the light switch is over there. My truth is if you go over here, you're going to find a light switch. But we're about as bright as a hundred white light bulb in the Astrodome. It's dark. It's not even a, it's not even a night light. We are created to crave the Creator. We are created to have a relationship with the Father. We live in a dark world, but we're the light of the world, folks. The Lord has given us light. Paul says, don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead expose them. How do you expose darkness but with light? I remember when we were in college, I had a friend who uh, had an apartment, and it was not a clean apartment. And so when you turn on the light, there went the roaches. Pew! You know what? It looked clean until you turned on the light. He says, expose the fruitless works of darkness. He says that when we are the light, it puts, a, it puts everything in perspective. Because we're going around uh, showing the light of Christ in our life. And it, it's such a contrast to this world. It's such a contrast to the hatefulness of this world. To the self-centeredness of this world that is sometimes and somehow uh, morphed and, and, and spun into some humanity. You know, if I go out and I, uh, and I uh, uh, have an abortion with my, uh, with my baby, it's for the greater good because what kind of life would that child have? We live in a dark world. We live in a dark world, but we are the light of the world. And Jesus tells us finally to shine your light. You know what? We got in here this morning, flipped on the light switch. Now, that's daylight. We probably could meet in here without the lights on today, but the Lord provided the sunlight today. It's a beautiful day. But tonight, or any night, when you go home and you flip on the light switch, you need it, don't you? Some of us even have those little timers that come on by themselves in a, in a particular room. Sometimes you have a night light, so when you get up in the middle of the night, you won't trip over your shoes when you go into the bathroom or getting a drink of water, you know? You need light. You have to have light. And, and having a light that you uh, can't use or don't use, you might as well not have a light. You have to have a light. He says that we're living in a dark world. We accept the fact that this world is dark. We, we are the light. We accept the fact that that is true, that our identity is in Christ. We are light. Had nothing to do with us, everything to do with, with the Father. He made us light through His Son, the Lord Jesus. But if we don't let our light shine, it's useless. Jesus says in verse 16, let your light shine before others. He didn't say, if you get around to it, if you think it would be a good idea, maybe if it's not inconvenient to you. He said, make it your business to let your light shine. Why? So that you may see good works and give glory to the Father in heaven. It's your top priority. It's on the top of your list. Make sure you let your light shine. See, we shine our light because it brings glory to the Father. 
It brings glory to the Father. We're not doing it because it brings glory to us. That's what humanism does. They're the center of the world. If I'm out here trying to be a narcissistic humanist, which is just all about me, I don't want to give it to you. Here's the thing. If you're in front and you're all about self-promotion, it is a conflict of interest to put somebody else first. But the Lord says to submit to others and put them first. We are the light, and He tells us to shine our light. So how do we do that? We, we do it by shining it to everyone we see, by living our life, by speaking the name of Jesus to a lost and dying world. You know, we've all been at home when the electricity's gone out. And you're sitting there, and maybe you're watching a TV show or a ball game, and suddenly the light goes out. Sometimes it don't even flicker, it just goes out. It's dark. And... Uh, Trying to look around for a candle, you know. Now we have phones. We can turn the phone on because everybody's got their phone with them within five inches of them. So we're looking for, the, for a candle to light the candle, right? We've done that. We, we had a, used to have a mirror in the, in the house we were living in. We'd put the candle in front of the mirror because it would multiply the light. It would reflect the light. We didn't put it under a pot. You know, we didn't do that because we might as well not light the candle if we're going to put it under a pot. We lit it and we put it where it would magnify the light. See, we're reflecting the grace of God in our lives. Or, or are we hiding our faith? We're reflecting it or we're hiding it. We are the light. And I can have a light, but I can, I can hide it. I can hide it. Jesus says no one puts a lamp, uh, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket but on a lampstand and gives it light to all who, will, who are in the house. You, you light your light and you put it up there where it can show. You don't put it under, a, uh, under something where it can't, can't be seen. There was a, Pew, a recent Pew study on social media uh, usage. And it was uh, between 18 and 20, ages 18 and 24, which I think are representative of the whole age group, honestly, of everybody. Not just 18, 24. I think we all can go in there. But it said that 80% of Americans that are 18 to 24 use Facebook. I think that's reasonable. I think we can believe that. 78% use Snapchat. I don't know what that is. Uh, 71% use Instagram. You see, we know that social and digital media today is a large part of our everyday life. It's become a big part of our life. Remember when we didn't have microwaves? We use them all the time. Now, how would you live without a microwave? You know? But the, the problem with social media is that it produces a false picture of our life. It produces a false image of what's really going on in your life. It produces your truth. And your truth, and your truth, and my truth. And I can walk down the road and act like I'm somebody when I'm not. I can act like I got the world by the tail, but I don't. Why? Because I want to compete with you having the world by the tail, and you don't. We live in a dark world. And we get on social media, and you know what else it does? It allows us to be ugly to one another and have no consequence. We get on there and we can say things, be mean to one another. We can, we can spout off all this political mumbo-jumbo or philosophical mumbo-jumbo. We can talk about Christianity and let somebody come back and tell us how bad it is. Or we can blah, blah, blah. And there's no consequence because we're really not around one another, are we? You said that to somebody uh, in, in a line somewhere, they're going to punch you right in the nose. But we got, we got a little buffer here because they're in China or they're in Australia or they're even down the block. They're not, they don't know where I am. I'm anonymous. We can say anything we like without any personal consequences. And folks, you know this, that without consequences, bad behavior continues. It just continues. It reminded me of a story I heard one time. This pig uh, was... Uh, was uh, eating some acorns under an oak tree. And he ate them up till he was full. And then after that, he started rooting around the, the tree. And the crow said, you shouldn't root around that tree. You're going to kill it. It's going to die if you expose the roots like that. He goes, I don't care if a tree dies, just so long as there's a bunch of acorns. Folks, that's the way it is. There's no acorns without the tree. If we go through this life and not representing the light of Christ in our life, letting it shine. 
Even when you're anonymous on social media. I'm not saying it's wrong to, to, to be on social media. If you're going to be there, be the light of Christ. It needs light. Amen? If you're going to be on Facebook, be the light. Be real. Share a witness. Be bold. We can refuse to show the light or we can be the light. We can let the light shine. Folks, there's always consequences to bad behavior. It may not be immediate, but eventually it comes. It may not be towards you. It may be toward the whole. Look at where we are today in our world. Hating one another. Literally, hating one another. Are we allowing our light to shine? Or are you hiding your light? Are you allowing your light to shine? Is it on a lampstand? Or are you putting it under a bushel? Are you putting it under a basket? Do we really truly believe that this world is dark? Or are we in it? Just like the rest of them. Just like the rest of them. Oh, we go to church once in a while. I'm tipping my hat to the Lord here and there. Get my ticket punched. But I get to live the way I want to live. James says, you adulterous people. Don't you know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Whoever wants to be friend with the world becomes an enemy of God. That's what it says. That's Scripture. That's not Alan. That's the Scripture. You adulterous people. You fickle people. You, uh, you uh, dishonest, unfaithful people. Don't you know that being in the world is not showing your light? You're being an enemy of God. Folks, when we come and we give our lives to Christ, that means we're signing up for the whole thing. Not part of it. Not when I want to do it. Not when it's convenient. For everything. Everything. When we sign up to be a a follower of Christ, we're in it. All the way in it. Are we ashamed of Jesus? Are you ashamed of Jesus? Are you walking around your life, living your life as if you're ashamed of Christ? Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because why? It's the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. Everyone who believes. Let your light shine. You don't know who the Lord wants you to shine His light for. There's some lost person out there that's under your influence, in your circle of influence, that He wants to to bless through your witness. You don't know that. You remember Yoga Berra? The old uh, baseball player, he said, a dime isn't worth a nickel anymore. I think a lot of Christians are that way today. Dime isn't worth a nickel anymore. Are we being faithful and shining our light? Are we picking and choosing? Are we being a humanist and deciding when would be the appropriate time to shine it and when would be the appropriate time to put it under a bucket? He says, let your light shine. We drove over here today, and we passed by this restaurant, and it was full to overflowing in the parking lot. They're parking out in the grass, going into this restaurant. I said, Jane, you know they're not distancing in that restaurant. I guarantee you, it's a COVID haven in there. It's an incubator. They're going in there, couldn't get in there, lined out the door. We drove down 100 yards, maybe. There's a church parking lot. Uh, There's... Ten cars in it. Are we being faithful? But you don't understand how hard it is to live this life. I'm working all the time. I'm tired. It's hard. It's difficult. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. Let your light shine. Paul says, walk as children of the light. For the fruit of light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Testing what is pleasing to the Lord. How do I know what's right? Because if I walk in the light, it will show me what's right and what's wrong. I will live that example. Others will see it as well because they find that I'm living a Christ-centered life. Hey, that guy's got something going on. I want to pay attention to what he has to say. I want to go ask him a question because he looks like he's got it figured out. I haven't figured anything out. But I know who has. I'm following the light. I'm allowing that light to shine in me. I heard a story one time of a duck broke his wing during a flight home for winter. And he, uh, he crash landed in a farm. And a farmer took pity on him, adopted that little duck as a, as a, as a pet. 
I think you started feeding it, and it started following them around everywhere they went when they did their chores and played outside, and, and they just began to love that, that duck. Well, the next fall came around, and they were outside, and the, the duck looked up, and there were some ducks flying uh, south for the winter, and it was wanting to go up there. It tried a couple times, but it wasn't healed up enough to fly. And it sure wanted to go, but it just couldn't make it. It wasn't strong enough for the flight. So it went back to the children. The children began to nurse it some more. And another year passed, and the next fall came. And by this time, it had grown a lot stronger. But it was fat because those kids had fed it everything. And so there it comes. The, 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 uh, the, the, the ducks were flying south for the winter, and it started to try to fly. It couldn't get off the ground. It was so fat. So it went back to the kids. Third year, here comes the ducks. And that little pet duck never even looked up at the ducks that time. Because it had been with those kids so long that its new existence, it forgot what it really was, a duck. That it was supposed to fly. It forgot what its calling was. Folks, I want you to know that God has not called us to be fat ducks. He's not called us to be fat ducks. He's called us to be soaring eagles. He's called us to shine the light to this dark world. He's shown us to let us go out there and, and be a, a, a beam of light to this dark and lost world. They need it more than ever. And He has chosen ordinary, common, everyday people like you and me to be the light of the world. I'm insignificant. Me too. But my God's not insignificant. He's the light of the world. He's made me the light of the world. I used to be darkness, but now I am light. You can be light as well. Folks, I don't know where you are in your life today. I don't know what's going on in your life. I know that we've got problems. I know that we've got difficulties. I know that we've got challenges. I know you're tired and weary. I know you are. We live in a dark world. But we're the light. Let's let a light shine. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you that you allow us to be light. Father, I pray, I pray that we would be faithful to being light. I pray that we would give ourselves a fresh and a new, even today. As we enter this time of invitation, Father, I pray that you would just speak to your people. Father, that you would just get a hold of them and that you would shake them awake and allow them to understand the urgency of showing uh, the light to the world. Father, I pray that you'd have your way today and your people would be obedient and faithful in responding to your call. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. You know, today perhaps God's convicted you that you're not shining His light as well as He wants you to. Maybe there's some areas of your life that you're shining it very brightly, but other, other areas it's not as, not as bright as, as He wants it to be. Maybe today... Uh, you want to shine your light brightly, but you don't really know what the next steps are. You're wondering, how do I get to that point where I'm shining the light of Christ in my life everywhere I go? Well, you know what? Everything that we're going to do begins and ends with prayer. Amen? It begins and ends in prayer. So I'm going to invite you to stand. I'm going to invite you to stand. I want to invite you to come down here and use this altar. I want to invite you to come down and do business with God. He's calling you. Will you answer? Will you answer today? As we sing.